the past couple of days, uh, I guess I <clears throat> seem to not be, I guess, content. I guess, for example, uh, just wear a mat. You mind if I just be open with you, church? Amen, like brother. Content, you know, uh, uh, with where I want to be. And I remember, I just had this attitude the past couple of days, and this morning I woke up with that. I remember I. I remember went downstairs and done laundry. As I was doing some laundry, a song popped in my mind. It talks about thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. And as I was doing the laundry, I started singing that song. There's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. Yes. There's food on table. Amen. It's shoes on my yeah. feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Amen. Hmm. I started saying that, I just started crying. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry for not being content. So I got a roof above my head. It may not be the home that we're looking for, but I got a roof above my head. I said, yeah, my back may be kind of sore because the bed's a little rough. I said, Lord, I got you. Give me a bed. I said, yeah, I'm not eating no steak and potatoes every night, but Lord, you gave me food in the cupboards. Yes. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Stop content. Aren't you thankful for the blessings he's given you? Amen. Brother Jesse, we're going to get through Going to get through. Open your Bibles to the book of Exodus. Book of Exodus, 17th chapter. Starting at the 8th verse. Exodus 17, 8. Right. You all there say amen. 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 Exodus 17, 8. The Bible says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Last verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears for Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Mm. I like to preach off the thought, bear the weight. Bear the weight. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for your spirit. God, I pray, Lord, for the night you just anointed my tongue. Lord, my lips are clay. Father, revelate my mind. Yes. Speak for me tonight. Speak to us, man. Yes. To us, Father, tonight. And won't you just strengthen us, O Lord? Thank you, Father, for those you call to bear the witness. In Jesus' name we do pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. This Monday I did some uh, uh, visitations. That's uh, the first time I've done it by myself. And I went to those that a uh, uh, pastor and I went to prior, uh, before he left. And, uh, I went to a brother. I went to his house and he's going through a hard time. He's really, really down. And really, really beaten up with what life has uh, offered him. And I went there and talked to him a little bit. And, of course, he just gave words, just negative words. He couldn't seem to lift himself up. And uh, I remember I was just listening, listening to him, engaging in conversation, you know, trying to pour some, pour some life into uh, what he's going through. I remember as I sat there on his little table and talking to him, uh, he had such a soft voice talking to me. And I remember I said, well, brother, it was some time in the conversation. I said, you know what? I said, I know. I know I'm a young man. I said, I know I don't know much. I told him about there was one named Moses. 
And the Bible talked about how this man Moses went up on a hill. It said it came a time when he was trying to pray unto God and he started getting weak. And the Bible talks about these two men came and lifted him up and encouraged him. The Bible says that victory came of that. And I said, brother, I said, no, I don't know much and I'm just young, but just like old Moses, what happened there, I want to be that Aaron and hurt you. I want to be there to encourage you and lift you up. And I remember I just looked at him and I seen the tears come to his eyes and I seen tears come to my eyes. And I said, brother, I know I can't do much, but I can show you one who can. And as I was thinking about that, I started thinking about this story and how the Bible talks about their uh, old Moses, how he smoked the rock and water came out. Very familiar. But then right after that, we see that the Bible says, then came Amalek. So we see, ain't it, ain't it, ain't it coincidence how you want to try to do good and then all of a sudden a battle comes your way? All of a sudden you want to dip your feet in the water and next thing you know you get whooped on? But we see here that the Bible says that once after that happened, the Bible says Moses came unto Joshua and said, I want you to choose men, out men, men that are fit for battle, men for our, our destiny for this, they're ready for this war. And he said, I want you to choose them, and I want you to go out, and I want you to fight with them. And now Joshua heard them words, and he said he didn't fight, and he just went out and done it. Look, praise the Lord there for someone who just listens and does it. And the Bible says that he went and done it, and this is, this is the key I want you guys to come get. The Bible says that he went out and fought with them. He said, tomorrow I will stand on the hill with the rod of God in my hand. I was thinking about this thought, bear the weight. Though we see here that there was a stand. If there's ever a time nowadays where we would stand for Jesus, that's now. I mean, we see nowadays everyone's just giving in. We got no people that's man in the front lines to stand for Jesus Christ because you know why? It's hard. It's hard bearing the weight. It's hard, you know, spiritually and emotionally to stand for Jesus. You know, it's hard to stand nowadays for the Lord. But I want to tell you that there was some help here. And I want you guys to come with me as the Lord showed me. I'm going to show you tonight, Lord being our helper. The Bible says I'm going to stand on the top of the hill. If you're ever going to stand for the Lord, you need to go to the hill. Now, the Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills for what's come with my help. What's he saying? He said when he's looking for some help, he's looking heavenward. So if you're ever going to stand for the Lord, you need to start looking towards heaven. And I say, thank you, Lord. Because the reason of it is, if you want to stand on your own and not look towards heaven, you ain't going to make it. But the Bible says that I'm going to stand on the top of the hill. You know, if you're ever going to stand for the Lord, you need heaven for help. I'm talking about the Lord being your helper. I'm talking about the times when you're standing and you don't know which way to go. I'm thinking about old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I was thinking about them this whole time when I was studying this. The Bible talks about these three old Hebrew boys, and they stood amongst all these people, and they said, when the music comes, well, you guys know the story, so you bow down, but these three old boys didn't bow down. When the world was bowing down, they were standing for Jesus. And I was thinking how hard that must have been, knowing the outcome of what it was going to be. But see, these people were on fire for the Lord. They didn't care. And can I tell you why? Because they looked heaven for help. They knew and said, Lord, I can't stand on my own. But God, I need your strength to stand before the world. Yeah. And not only did he get heaven for help, but I want you to get this. He said, with the rod of God in my hand. Yeah. Now, if anyone knows about a rod, that symbolizes power. Yeah. You can shout me. <laughs> now, when you think of a rod, when you go on a walk, and you get a walking stick. What's a walking stick for? Yeah, sure. Stabilize you, strengthen you. When someone has a cane, what's that cane for? It's to strengthen when you're weak, to help you out. And I was thinking about the rod that Moses had. And I was looking back at all the miracles he'd done with his rod. He held it up and the sea was split. It wasn't him, but it was the power of God. He talks about how he smoked that rock with the rod and the water came out. We see all these miracles done with the rod. Now that rod symbolizes power. Now, I don't know about you, but a preacher can't preach without the power of God. Amen. We can't stand before the Word without the power of God. We can't go unto someone and heal them instead of the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible talks about this old boy was trying to heal them. And the old devil jumped on him and says, yeah, I know Paul and I know the Lord, but I don't know you. See, the thing it is that we're going to stand against the devil nowadays. We need the power of God in our life. I'm, I'm not talking about just Sunday getting our power. I'm 
talking about every day. Getting on your face before the Lord and saying, God, I need your power today. God, I need your power to talk to people about you. Amen. Oh, said, you don't even go out and talk to someone till he prays to the Lord to anoint his lips. Oh, boy, that just blessed my heart. Since then, I've been praying for God to anoint my lips before I go up them doors. Because you know why? I'm human. And I'm going to say things that's going to break what the Lord's been doing. But if I say, Lord, I need your power tonight. I need your anointing of the Holy Ghost. He will come and use you. Amen. There was a stand and he looked to heaven for help. And he had the power of Christ. But see, when every time you stand, there's going to be a struggle. Now the Bible talks about this old man named Moses. How this fight, fight went on. He said, tomorrow I'm going to go up on the hill. I'm going to stand. I'm going to hold the rod of God in my hand. And the Bible says the day came that they fought. And Joshua went and fought. And Moses went, but he didn't go alone. The Bible says he carried Aaron and Hur. And they went up with him. And the Bible says it came to pass. When Moses held up his hands, Israel prevailed. But then when he dropped it down, Israel failed. They weren't prevailing. The enemy was prevailing, right? So we see here when that happened, but the Bible says, as anyone knows, when you hold your hand for too long, it grows a little weak. It grows a little tired. You know, when you're trying to cry out to God for so long, sooner or later your hands start to grow a little tired. And next thing you know, you need a little help. Next thing you know, this one person that was standing for the Lord, now he's struggling. Amen. Am I preaching to anyone tonight? Because we know that when we try to stand for the Lord and do right, we get to struggling. We get to hard to keep our hands up. Next thing you know, those hands I once was lifted to the Lord, they're falling down because you can't bear the weight no longer. But I'm glad God sent someone to bear the weight. I'm glad God sent someone to say, Brother, let me lift you up a little bit. Amen, Brother, brother. you yeah. can do it. I'm telling you, this is a spiritual warfare. And I know sooner or later this standing for the Lord is going to grow tired. It's going to be hard. But I'm glad God sent someone to bear the weight. Amen. So there was a struggle. But I like this. I like this. The Bible says, oh, Aaron and her, they stepped up to the plate. They seen a brother who was struggling. They seen a brother who was trying his hardest to go. And then he stepped in. Can I tell you, when the Lord's going to step in, we know you've actually tried. Amen. People ask for help, but they ain't even trying. This old man Moses, he tried. And see, that's when the Lord stepped in. And the Bible says, oh, Aaron and Hur came and said they took a stone and they sat in on him. And you guys come with me here. You're going to start shouting here in a minute. He took a stone and sat in on him where he sat on it. Then old Aaron, one of them grabbed one arm, held it up. The Bible says one on the other held the other up. Now I was doing some digging here. And I was digging about that rock. Now, the Bible says that he's my rock and my fortress. Yes, the Bible talks about a strong foundation and a weak foundation. Now, the Bible talks about that strong foundation was built upon the rock. He said he's founded on the rock. And I was thinking about that rock, but it symbolized, it symbolized God the Father. And I was thinking about when you're on that strong foundation, when the storms come, you're still at rest and at ease. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the Lord's got you covered, you can take a break, all right? You can take a break. So I was thinking about that, and I started digging a little further. And I was thinking about that man named Aaron. Now, Aaron, who was he to that Israel? He was the high priest. And I was digging in the Bible a little bit. My Bible says that Jesus is my high priest. So I'm glad that I can rest on the Lord. And not only that, but Jesus lifts my hand and said, Brother, you can do it. The Bible says he is the intercessor. Yeah, can I tell you, he's always praying for you, old Peter. He says, I pray for you, lest the devil will sift you like wheat. I'm glad when I can't pray no more, the Lord's still praying for me. Yeah, so not only am I resting yeah. on the God the Father, and not only is Jesus lifting my hand up, but I started digging a little more, and I started Googling her, and I Googled it on their name and everything on their that's true. And I, I typed in, what's the definition of her? And you know what came up? Liberty. You know what my Bible says? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. liberty. Mm. Hey! <laughs> not only do you rest on the Lord on the rock when things are getting rough, I'm telling you, not only does Jesus hold your hand up, but the Spirit is lifting you up. It's not that it was a stand, it was a struggle, but see, when you're in struggle, here comes support. <laughs> You know what support is from? The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And hey, not only is it them, but you got the church. Hey, brother, you got the church. 
I'm talking about when you come in bearing them burdens. That the brother comes up and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, you know what he's doing? He's bearing the weight. Amen. Oh, Aaron and her, seeing how Moses was bearing too much weight from the bear. And they realized they needed to step in. They realized that they couldn't bear it no more. And the Bible says that because of that, there was a victory. You know Moses couldn't have done it by himself? Amen. Thank you for the word. Moses couldn't do it by himself. And the Lord knew that, so the Lord sent someone his way. And you know they waited to that right moment? You know what their only purpose right there was just to hold him up and sit, sit him on that? They had one thing to do, and they'd done it. And because of that, there was a victory. The Bible says, and Joshua discomfited Amalek. He destroyed him with the edge of the sword. Remember, oh, Jesus, when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights? You know, the Bible says after that, the devil came and tempted him. He tempted him three times. And you know what he replied with every time? The Word of God. <laughs> I'm talking about you only got to get victory with the Word of God. I'm telling you how many times when we need to stand on the promises of the Lord. I'm telling you how many times of, uh, we see a brother bearing the weight that we need to step up and give him a little scripture. Say, hey, brother, your word says that you've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. You know what you did is you just bore the weight a little bit. Amen. Or maybe your brother's struggling a little bit and he feels alone. You say, hey, brother, your word says you'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know what you did? You just bore the weight a little bit. <coughs> there was a success. Now, I want to leave this with this thought. What if I told you their success doesn't come unless you bear the weight. Yes. Now, the Lord showed me this one time. It stuck with me ever since. He talks about abiding in the Lord. He talks about when, you, when you're not abiding, you're going to wither away and cast out. Yes. He says when you're abiding, you know what he says? Whatever you ask of me, I'll give unto you. You know what he said that when you're abiding in me? And you know what he told me? He said, look, them people you've been praying for, that have been struggling with, if you keep abiding in my word, I'm going to grant your prayer. But see, when you don't abide in me and you keep praying for him, I ain't going to do it. That's what he told me. But he says, if you keep abiding in me, then people that's been struggling, I'm going to answer that prayer. He said, if you keep abiding in me, then people that's lost, I'm going to answer that prayer. And right then, this weight just hit me. I start thinking about my old daddy. I start thinking about all the people I've been praying for that's been in my heart. I said, Lord, I want to keep abiding in you so that comes to pass. I was thinking about brothers that come in this church and sisters, that they bear this weight upon them. And my heart just grieves and my, my heart breaks for them. And I said, Lord, won't you just bear the weight? And he said, look, if you keep abiding in me, it's going to come true. And he showed me, look, I know people's going through a hard time. And I know it's hard to keep your hands up. Is anyone hearing me tonight? But he said, I've got an errand in a herd to come your way. Yes, and I'm yes, going to hold yes. your hands up when you can't do it no longer. Amen. He said, I believe the devil is just rejoicing at that. When he's seen old Moses put his hands down, I think he was just rejoicing and dancing. But see, they didn't see Mary and her step up. So don't, don't you want to make the devil tremble? Yeah, don't you want to make him tremble tonight? There's people in here defeated. I said there's people in here defeated. Amen. And we want to go around and we don't want to bear the weight. Maybe we've got too busy lives. Maybe we've got too much going on. What if that was you? Remember a time when you were bearing a burden and weight in your life? You didn't know which way to turn? And you come in here broken? The lightest words of encouragement lifted you for weeks. Let's see if we want to move past that. See, Aaron and her noticed the need. And they jumped into action. And they did work. I think it's time that we start doing work. Maybe we got some people that we've been praying for. Hey, we're bearing the weight. It's time for us to be the intercessor for them. Good. Good. I'm telling you, when you got that weight on your shoulders and your arms, and you're trying to keep your hands up praising the Lord, and it's just like it's so long that the answer's not coming. The battle's lasting so long that you can't keep your hands up no longer. That's what Moses did. But see, right when it was about to quit, the Bible says they were losing. They were actually losing. Amen. But then God said, and Aaron and her said, look. Hey, you know Aaron Hurl was right behind him the whole time. It wasn't down the battle, they were right there. You see, the real battle is not physically, but spiritually. It's time that we start taking this battleground to the spiritual ground. It's Amen. Not physical. 
but it's spiritual. As a sister comes and plays the piano, as a church is standing, So every head's bowed, no one looking around. I ask if there's a soul in here. They've been bearing the weight, and they can't bear it no more. Won't you just raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me? No one's looking around, bless that hand. So there be anyone else.